I'm a sales manager for a television station. I manage a staff of four people and the day-to-day -day operations of the sales organization. At the same time, I volunteer in my community and I do speak publicly about overcoming my challenges. I've always wanted to be involved in media and television. It took me a good four years to find that job. It was discouraging time, sure. Uh, you know, you want to be seen as the person that you are in total, not just the, the shell that you are on the outside. But um, I knew that in time the opportunities would come. You know, I, the 20 or 25 interviews that I had over four years, that's hundreds of resumes. Hundreds. Um, if I really were going to give up, I would have given up after the first 10 or 20. But that's not who I am. I, I want to continue to grow, no matter what I do. I uh, interviewed with a station in Syracuse, hit it off with the local sales manager. He was interested in how I sold, not who I was or what I looked like. It was difficult to get him hired. The uh, upper management was not totally thrilled with someone with his physical uh, abilities. They were afraid that you know he would demand that we put in special handicap equipment around the building and it was going to cost money, that he would might be a problem. Thing. He had a meeting with my boss and uh, a typical kind of an old-fashioned question that sales managers used to ask it. They'd pick up something from their desk like a coffee cup or a stapler and say, sell me this coffee cup. And most people would hold up the coffee cup and say, well, it's blue, it's got a handle. Uh, and John did something that I've never seen anyone do before, and that is he did a customer needs analysis. In other words, instead of just talking about the coffee cup, he questioned the sales manager and said, well, do you drink a lot of coffee? Do you drink coffee? Do you drink tea? How much do you drink a day? In other words, he found out information about how that customer, potential customer, would use the coffee cup. And that's one of the things that's very important in sales is, is you don't go in and say, here's our product. You go in and say, what do you need? Yeah, I think he blew him away at that point. He earns everything he gets uh, in our business. So, uh, you know, it's you're not being paid by the hour, and they're just throwing somebody a bone. You know, just because he's a nice guy in our business, you you earn your living by being paid on commission. So you have to get the job done yourself, and uh, there aren't a lot of other people around to help you do that. If somebody hires me, I want to make sure I do a good job. If I don't do a good job, I don't deserve the job. Andy James, please. That's one of the nice things about being in sales is that there's less of, do I deserve the job? Am I employed because I'm disabled? Andy John Robinson, how you doing? Not much. Uh, we're coming over today at three. Is that all right with you? I'll be there. See you then. Yeah, bye. You know, I'm employed because I do what I do, and that's raise revenue for whomever I'm working for. I've seen people fail in sales because they take rejection personally, but that just means you haven't looked for the right solutions to what the problems are. Being a person with disabilities my whole life, I've realized that you have to overcome whatever objection you're dealt with yourself first and then others around you. Really it comes down to problem solving, introducing yourself to new prospects, being able to have a good conversation and then show the features and benefits of whatever it is that you're talking about. And if it's a win-win for everybody then it should be a success. Knock, knock. Hey, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? How've you been? Doing well. Good? Just finishing up something here. I remember when uh, John first came in and he introduced himself. I guess, yeah, he made an impression on me for, you know, a few different reasons. Yeah, he just came across as, you know, just an average everyday guy. In most cases, he comes in and we just, you know, talk about what we're going to do in the next quarter. It's pretty, you know, laid back. I've gone out with him to lunch, to, to dinner, for drinks and he just moves right along just like anybody else. He just gets it done. John is definitely a glasses half full guy, which I can tell you more people maybe than, than not are not that way, and they have everything going for him physically. It's pretty inspirational, I'd say. John is so comfortable with himself and doesn't see himself as being disabled that he puts everybody else at ease. I mean, the, the ability for him to walk into a room extend his arm, shake somebody's hand, just totally normalizes the situation and takes every, all the, um, the stuff that people have around people with disabilities away. I, I mean, it still is remarkable to me, you know, someone basically with no arms and no legs in a, in a sport 
that requires you to, you know, to make turns and, and uh, you know, you're holding a golf club, you know? And how does somebody do that without any arms? You think about that. And actually to even strike the ball and, uh, and hit it. And John does it. And every single time he does, I till this day, I still sit there and say, that's just unbelievable. That is unbelievable. I'm not going to win any golf tournaments, but um, I really like to play and to get out there because, you know, in my mind, I'm just a golfer. The same issues that everybody else has that, you know, my putting stinks, my short game stinks, I wish my driving was longer and straighter. You know, it's all the same as everybody else. I will challenge myself to make sure I go camping a few times a year. Uh, we do hike together. Uh, she has convinced me to do some mountains in the Adirondacks as a family, which have been great moments. Mount Joe is a 700 vertical climb. It's 2,800 feet above sea level, but to me it's the biggest mountain I'll ever do. And uh, I may not do it with a smile on my face necessarily, uh, and I may have a lot of dirt on me at the end of it, but it is something that I'm proud that I do with them. Andrea can hike up and down Mount Joe in... 45 minutes, up and down. It takes me a good three and a half hour round trip to be able to do it. It's probably an hour and 15 up, and then two plus hours to come down, because it's that much harder to fall down rocks than it is to climb up rocks. I'm not one necessarily to rest if I'm, if I'm gonna go like that. Um, you know, the way my body works, it's better if I go at a steady pace. When I can lift my leg up like I would with a stair, I'll do that. More times than not, I'm really trying to just pull myself up as I would in a chair with my arms. You know, a lot of cases in my life, I've built strength in my back and my arms and my neck because that I'm using them like most people would use their legs. So climbing is, is much the same way. I mean, it's dirtier, it's harder, it's on a rock, it hurts. I'm scraping myself, but um, I'm pulling myself up onto the next ledge or into the next crevice. And if I can walk it, great. If I can step up, fine. More times than not, I'm you know, flopping on my belly and trying to pull myself up. It is an uphill crawl. The first time I did it, my shirt was mud, caked mud. I'm not going to do it every day, and I certainly am sore for a day or two after. But I'm proud that I've done it. I'm, I'm glad that my kids get to see it. Maybe my kids don't realize it now, but you know what? Dad got out and hiked with us. You know, with short legs and short arms at 40 years old, climbing over boulders and falling down and being completely muddy and um, doing it because it was good for my kids, it was good for me, and it was great for Andrea and I. Cool. We are at the top. You can get bogged down in your little world, but the greater importance is to realize that you, know, you have to be happy with what you have. You know, I have a, a blessed with a good family and a good career, and that's what's important. Um, you know, do I wish I was different at times? Sure, but you know, not today, not right this moment. Um, you know, is it going to take me twice as long to get down this hill? Yeah. Do I wish it wasn't? Yes, but I, it is, and that's what I, I can suck it up and do it. I just think that everybody could learn something by seeing the fact that somebody who has an obvious reason to be different doesn't choose to be different, that you can succeed anyway. He immeasurably enriched our lives, and I think he's a better person for what he's been through. And not only, it's not like it's not over for him, 
And he said to me once, I have to get up every day and face the world, and I have to have that kind of stubbornness and determination, or I wouldn't do it. And he's absolutely right. It's like, uh, well, the cross in Christianity is the central thing, because it's the, the mystery of suffering leading to joy. I think about my old grandchildren, and I think, this is what I want. I want them to be like John. You know, I want them, I want them to be happy. I want them to be successful. I want them to have their own families and to, you know, to enjoy life. And I think John does. I keep what I call hodgepodge notebooks, and anything that interests me, I keep. And um, I pasted that in my notebook, and I came across it the other day. It was just something he wrote to me. And he said, we find our way. And John has found his way. Whether it's the challenge of this, or the challenge of the mountain, or the challenge of parenting, or the challenge of a career, uh, that's been what I'm about. I want to work hard to be the person I am today and tomorrow.